so uh, ha have you tried running this, say, on the web server? And if so, what happened? Okay, this is my failing, not, not Crayer's failing. I have a hard time with high-level software. I get it up and I get it running. I'm trying to run Java EE. I'm trying to run, um, I can't tell you what I'm trying to run, but I'm trying to run you know, a web server that's important to, to Red Hat in the future. And just getting it to run is causing me headaches. But I, everything that I have tried up till now has worked. So if there is a, we, uh, a, a, a demo program that's easy to run that you think I should try this on next, send it to me and I will do that first thing on Monday morning. Um, I really want real world test cases, but I'd like something that someone who's got bits under their fingernails can understand how to run. Are, are there... Spec JBB? Uh, okay, I'm not allowed to talk about Spec JBB, right? Because only Spec can talk about Spec JBB. Um, but I have tried things like the DeCapo benchmarks, but they're not interesting, right? They're not, they don't have the sort of web connections that you, you're trying to get at. And, and not just Java, uh, like, uh, is there experience anywhere about running Creu? I know with other languages, other kinds of applications? Go has an interface. Python uses it for quick startup. Um, this is not, I'm not doing anything revolutionary. This is not a research paper. This is not a research project. This is something I think would be helpful to your Joe Java programmer. So for the question about uh, app servers, I know that we've played with uh, Creu on Liberty, and we've been able to snapshot Liberty and bring it back up. So running simple, you know, test applications like Hello World level things, but what happens to the socket? Everything restarted. Okay. At Everything the, just works. At least in the examples we run, and they, you know, they've been very trivial ones. If you're running Java from inside of a container. I can, you're, that, that's the easy case. That's, that's going to just work because they've, they've proven that for all kinds of applications. Um, any other questions? No discussion? What do, you, what, what do you foresee as the hardest problem to bring this into uh, something that's like uh, uh, sharp and useful as a generic tool? Um, I am hoping that I can get something working by this spring that gives you basically the functionality in the straw man. Um, I have gotten, I'm working on a demo to give you a more compelling uh, proof of concept uh, sometime this month. Yes? So does it like appear that the network was gone for a while or when you do a save and restore or um if you do a save and restore in the same machine huh? and your connection is still there it just all comes back up yeah. and works but but li like if you have timeout from the remote endpoint or yes then so then you would have to restart i yeah. i am still pushing S the edge so of the so it looks like like the network was gone for a while or yeah okay that that cool. was what i would assume i have not tested it uh -huh. I'm talking from first principles here, from what I have tested. Cool. Yeah, Project in current state is available in some kind of like GitHub or open source form, is it? Yeah. It should be. Okay. It, it will be. It will be next week, I promise. Cool. Uh, there was another question. Yeah, I'm responsible for naive questions here. Uh, what, what's the, the huge difference to, let's say, taking VMware, snapshotting this one, and then duplicating it I'm sorry. Have basically virtual machine running which I would clone um, what's the difference so I have a Java process within a virtual machine of course it's an entire simulated machine uh, what kind of advantages I have uh, when I basically do this on a process level and what might be the disadvantages so um, I tried to give you motivation for why we want access to this from inside of Java right we kind of want to know where we're snapshotting Maybe we want some control over having a fully garbage collected heap before we snapshot. Those are the sorts of advantages from doing it inside of Java. Um, I have done some stuff from outside of Java where you try and catch it at just the right point, and that doesn't feel very satisfying because you don't know if you have or not. So I think the advantage 
is of what I'm doing is just to give the Java programmer the hooks to do it from inside of Java. That's all. Uh, to give you more control, because I'm a control freak. How much OS support do I need besides Creo? What what does need Creo need to basically make this happen? Except then it has Linux. To, it, there's actually support in the Linux kernel for Creo, so it's in the kernel now, and you can use it. But if you want to ask me when it's going to be available on, say, Mac OS or Windows, no, um, I'm, I'm talking I'm operating just say systems we use in production, I guess. What? I'm talking about operating systems we really use in production. <laughs> so <coughs> nobody's running. Is anyone running macOS servers anymore here? <laughs> no, okay, fine. <laughs> Not really. But developers want access to the same tools on their development machine as they have on their servers. And I have to be honest and say this is all built on top of Linux stuff. And I'm not signing up to re-implement the world on, on Mac OS or on Windows. That's just not, that would not make my life better. Good enough for me. Okay. Any other questions? Any discussions? Yes? Uh, maybe it's a bit out of the scope, but ca can you restore... Uh, like the same process multiple, multiple time on the same host? If you have the PID manager, and I have tried to find the PID manager because Adrian assures me that it's a thing and it's real and it can do this, um, then you can restore it multiple times on the same host. So there is like an option to create a different socket because otherwise you will have the same socket. Yeah. Yes. Um, I do not know if there's, I, I do not know the, the bounds of what that means. Okay. Um, like I said, I am ramping this up and I don't have all the answers. I wish I did. I wish I could say I had this thing that I'm giving you that does everything you want. But I don't know everything you want until I talk to people and I'm learning everything. I, I'm learning by talking to you guys what it is that I need to worry about. Are there any other questions? Yeah, on the, um, the topic of sockets and such, uh, I think generally the uh, the th the gotchas are probably resources that um, only exist in one instance. PIDs were like that before C groups, uh, but um, not anymore. Uh, so, but sockets are probably a big issue. Maybe memory map things as well, to some extent. Yeah, I can imagine that if you guys, if we tried to share the same memory mapped file among multiple With different JVMs, modes. things could go bad. Um, I don't have an answer for that yet, but I will, I will put that on my list of things that I have to make sure we get right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. More questions? Uh, like network sockets, it doesn't doesn't scare me. They they will they they hand, you handle these connections anyway, right? But persisted state on disk that doesn't follow with with the the the, 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 the memory the stuff in memory that just sounds like a you know a, a nightmare and something like you need to have really good design for and like good guidelines on how how are you supposed to think here and design the entire system around it and uh, yeah. Creo right yeah. now, yeah. if you have a file descriptor to a file and you bring it up on another machine and the file is a different size, yeah. right? Then it will it will give up. If the file's not there, it will give up, yeah. right? You have to have the files right. It could still be a source of very, very nasty bugs. So the file happened to be the same size, but it's like it's snapshot at a different time, a little bit different content. Like it's a cache invalidation uh, nightmare. So uh, when uh, my boss makes comments like that to me, I say, okay, yeah. well then we run it in a container. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. All I want, all I'm really trying to do is give an answer to the folks who say I can spin up Go like this, and spinning up Java takes too long, so I'm going to write my next thing in Go. I want to give them the ability to spin up Java really fast, and maybe they're not running their entire application checkpoint, and maybe they're just, you know, doing the equivalent of all the stuff you need to do to get Hello World up, and then checkpointing it, right? Even that can save you time and make make our case for using Java stronger. Yeah, just on the file descriptors. If if you are worried about the file descriptors in the sh checkpoint, you could potentially read all your file descriptors, copy the files, 
to somewhere and then you know they should be in the same state as long as you transfer them. I presented that idea several times. I have gotten some really bad looks. My log foils I'm are ginormous. I'm not saying it's a good thing. Can be done. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just because everyone asks um, about sockets and files and things like that, I just want to say um, I could imagine a very, use, a very good use case because everyone nowadays talks about functions function as a service. Uh, serverless might be similar. You can do serverless with running Java process and things like that. It might not be a problem. But if you do function as a service and you want to scale up quickly and you can freeze your small process, functions should be small, um, and you can handle basically the state. Functions typically don't have a state on disk or things like that <laughs> and should read fresh. Um, and the socket, this is something you can bring back. Even so, you have a, a live server connect. You should always basically do high availability checks and fail over uh, in your process. Then I think this might be a very good thing. And if you have the ability, when the process comes back, to basically say, oh, let me do this, this, and this, and invalidate this, and that now I'm back, and this takes one milliseconds instead of the 100 we have seen before, I buy it. Okay, so I had, and the, the guy that took me out to the tool shed to beat me up was from Amazon who said that his functions as a service, if they came back up with the certificate that had expired, the world was going to end. So I had said server as a function. That was one of my use cases up until now. But he just, he was convinced that, that the world was going to end because the certificates had expired. So I need to, and, and he, didn't, he didn't expect programmers to be able to add the hooks before and after to get everything right. And I have a lot of faith in Java programmers. I think they can do that. Well, if you just basically think about stuff that, that, that lives for a day, the certificate doesn't expire every day, at least for most of us. Um, if you do really, really hardcore security, maybe it expires every couple of minutes. Um, but if you basically can preserve your function, your setup uh, for 24 hours, and it spins up quickly, and every night at midnight when there's no traffic, you accept the 120 milliseconds to create your fresh copy, why not? That is an excellent answer, and that is precisely why I'm talking to you people. Now I could have stopped that guy short. Actually, if he listens to this, I'll be in trouble. But that would be an answer that he would have found very happy. He would have been happy with, I think. Anything else? I think we're done. Thank you very much for all your help. Thank you.